result of sin in the earth still. This aspect of our Lord's reign will also be um, present in the earth. And it's a, a very controversial part of our Lord's reign because a lot of the saints struggle with this issue. And that is that sacrifices will still be offered on the altar before our Lord at the temple. When I say sacrifices, I'm talking about burnt offerings and sin offerings will be made on the altar of God uh, at, that, at the temple during that time. And so a lot of confusion is uh, uh, in the church around this issue because they tend to view the fact that, you know, well, Jesus is there and the blood of the Lamb has cleansed the saints, so what offerings are going to be offered? And why would there be burnt offerings and sin offerings? Because, you know, there's going to be no sin. Now, there will be sin, but not among the saints. And so the sacrifices that will be offered during that time will not be for the saints of God. And we need to understand that. So let's look at some scripture along the line so we can understand the concept of the fact that during our Lord's millennial reign, that there in fact will be burnt offerings and sin offerings and grain offerings, all those types of offerings offered on the altar of God physically at that time. Uh, the first scripture we can look at is Isaiah 66, verse 21 to 23. Scripture says, And I will also take some of them for priests and Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. And so this passage of scripture is pertaining to our Lord's millennial reign and also going into the new age. We're not touching on the new age in this series at all. But the opening passage, comment that our Lord makes here, he, he's talking about his saints now in context, if you read the full passage. He says, and I will also take some of them for priests and Levites. And so you recall we said roughly 300 million saints. Now again, that's not a fixed number. That's just a number that's been thrown out there for the, um, the, the what's the word I'm looking for, in order to just try and teach the concept of how the church will be located, where she'll be located, and you know just the practicalities of, of our Lord's reign. So the number is just a number. They don't get hung up about the 300 million and say, well, you know, Mike says 300 million. Um, but the point is, is that then you've got the city of Jerusalem. It's only, so, only, only so many people can get in there. Then you have the temple area, and only so many people can fit in there. And you have the altar, and because that altar will be there. And so, um, so only so many sacrifices can be offered on that altar. So none of this, with regards to when our Lord says here, and some of them will be taken for priests and Levites, it is only going to be a select few of the Lord's saints that he will appoint to operate as priests and Levites during this time. You say, but I thought that we were all priests unto God, the, the saints of God, because that's true. The, uh, the Bible very clearly tells us that we may be made priests unto God. It, that is correct, but not all priests, even um, under the Old Covenant, not all the priests served at the altar of God. Most of the priests served in, in the temple, doing the work of the temple and all of the peripheral work that had to be done around the temple. There was only a very select few that ministered to the Lord with sacrifices on his altar and also went into the temple of God to offer up uh, sacrifices there. And so with regards to this passage of scripture, why God says some of them, I will take to be priests and Levites. And he's talking about his saints now. It's only a select few that God will use to offer up um, burnt offerings and sin offerings on his altar at that time. The saints will not need to offer up any offerings from God, to God, uh, any physical offerings or burnt offerings and sin offerings and that. It's, that this, what we're going to teach on in this section now doesn't pertain to the saints at all. Uh, it is the unbelieving nations that will need access to that, not the saints. We've already discussed that the saints on that plain outside of the city of Jerusalem will come on the Sabbath days and the new moons and the, and the feast days to worship before the Lord. And so theirs will still be spiritual 
sacrifices that they will offer people God, not physical in nature. But nevertheless, physical sacrifices will need to be offered during that time, and the physical sacrifices will be need, will need to be offered for the unbelieving nations of the earth. So let's have a look at some scripture along that line. Zechariah 14, verse 20 and 21. Um, scripture says, In that day, holiness to the Lord shall be engraved on the bells and of the horses. The pots and in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls of the, before the altar. Yes, every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holiness to the Lord of hosts. Everyone who sacrifices shall come and take them and cook in them. In that day there shall no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And so this is talking again around physical sacrifice taking place on the altar of God in the city of Jerusalem at that time in the temple. Um, and the, we talk, the physical sacrifices are bulls and lambs that will be slaughtered and offered before God at that time. So why is it that physical sacrifices will be need, need to be offered before God? Well, it's because of the unbelieving nations. We've read, we've gone through passages of scripture already that have shown us that many of the unbelieving nations, people in those nations, will come to the city of Jerusalem, come to the temple to pray before the Lord. Now, in order for them to be able to gain access to the temple to pray before the Lord, they will have to be cleansed. Just like under the Old Testament, in order to get the Jews to gain access to the temple to, to pray before God, they also had to uh, offer up cleansing sacrifices. Now, the unbelieving nations of the earth will not have access to the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Christ is only for the church. It's not for the, the well. It's for the world, but the, those who accept it, it is applied to. It's not applied to the world. Otherwise, the world's sins are forgiven. They don't have to be held accountable for that. that we're not going to go down the road. And so, the blood of Christ cleanses the sin of the of the saints only, and that would have already been applied by this time. And so, the unbelieving nations that come up to the city of Jerusalem. They will be sinful in nature. They would have committed sins. And now they want to come into the temple of God and offer praise before the, Lord, the Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that won't happen and be accepted to God unless they are first cleansed from their sin. And so the same cleansing that was put in place for the Jews under the Old Testament will be put in place for the unbelievers during our Lord's millennial reign. They will have to be cleansed with the blood of bulls and lambs and goats. Same principle will apply to them. And so that's why our physical sacrifice of lambs and rams and bulls and goats will be taking place on the altar at that time. Not for the saints. They don't need it but for the unbelievers who come on pilgrimages to the city of Jerusalem, to the temple, to offer a praise before the Lord. They will need it before their prayers can be accepted by God. They need to have be cleansed. And that will be their cleansing, just like it cleansed the Jews under the Old Covenant. Um, God will then allow them to then offer their prayers before Him. In this passage, it talks about no longer um, there shall no longer be a Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. That's just alluding to the Antichrist. He will, he's the cunning Canaanite that will sit in the temple during his reign on the earth. He would have been done away with by that time. Another passage of scripture that just talks around this concept of the sacrifices, physical sacrifices being offered on the altar during our Lord's reign. Isaiah 56 verse 6 and 7 says, Also the sons of the foreigner who join themselves to the Lord to serve him, and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And so this is talking not about the believers, not about the saints who now will come and offer up burnt offerings and sin offerings before the Lord. Not at all. This is talking about those unbelieving people groups in the earth who will endeavor to serve God 
and they will want to um, hold, keep his, his Sabbaths and you know, keep his covenants. And so they will come to his house of prayer. They will need to be offering up burnt offerings and sacrifices. Those burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on his altar. Why? Because his house is a house of prayer. So they're coming to pray to the Lord. But before they can offer up their prayers, they need to be cleansed. And they will have to be cleansed by these physical um, sacrifices that will be offered on the altar. Now, it's the Lord's saints that will do the work of priests, um, remember that, that scripture said he will take some of his saints. It didn't say his saints, but in context, in context, he's talking to the saints. He will take some of them to be Levites and priests. And so they are the ones who will act as priests on behalf of the unbelieving nations. And they will offer up the sacrifices for the unbelieving nations that come to the temple to worship. Those sacrifices will then be accepted by the Lord and their prayers will then be heard by him. So that's the reason why we have these physical sacrifices offered before the Lord during that time. Another passage of scripture, again, that again relates around this concept. And as I say, it's a difficult concept for a lot of Christians to get their minds around because they view the old covenant done away with, new covenant spiritual. Where's all the advanced sacrifices coming from? Jeremiah 33, verse 15 to 18, the scripture says, in those days and at that time, I will cause to grow up to David a branch of righteousness, talking about our Lord Jesus. He shall execute judgment and righteousness in the earth. And in those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will dwell safely. And this is the name by which she will be called the Lord, our righteousness. For thus says the Lord, David shall never lack a man to sit on the throne of the house of Israel. Nor shall the priests, the Levites, lack a man to offer burnt offerings before me, to kindle grain offerings, and to sacrifice continually. And so here again we see our Lord's saints being used during this time to offer up uh, burnt offerings before the Lord, grain offerings, and sacrifices before God. Now the, those offerings will be offered for those who come to offer a prayer, um, the, the unbelievers who come to offer a prayer at the, at the temple during that time. But also don't forget, we've also got now the rebellious nations out there. The, the nations, for I say, who don't come to um, the Feast of Tabernacles, they just rebel. Now they get judged, but they now need to also repent and they need to be forgiven in order for that judgment to be removed from them. So how does that happen? Well, as it was under the Old Testament, when this, the nation of Israel sinned against the Lord, they would have to repent and offer up before the Lord the appropriate sacrifices as an act of repentance. That will happen as well. So those nations will, be, will have to send delegations up to the city of Jerusalem, and they will have to offer up before the Lord uh, a burnt offering and sin offering, before the Lord will accept their repentance and then lift the judgment and so send rain into that nation once again. So pretty much the Old Testament laws will be applicable to the unbelievers in the earth during our Lord's reign. Um, because don't forget the law was put in place for the unrighteous, not for the righteous. And so all of those dwelling in the earth will be unrighteous. It's only the saints that will be righteous. And so they will not be observing the laws of, of Moses as such, uh, the saints that is. But the, the unrighteous, the unbelievers in the earth will be required to observe those laws. And part of that is when they do step out of line, in order for them to receive forgiveness, they will have to offer up the sin offering on the altar of God. So that explains how it is that during our Lord's millennial reign that there will still be physical offerings on the altar of God during that time. Now, another aspect that will take place during our Lord's millennial reign is that there will no longer be any wars at all. Isaiah 2.4, this is a passage of scripture that most Christians know very well. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so one thing that will not happen in the earth during our Lord's millennial reign, even though the people of the earth will still be sinful in nature, no wars will break out. 
One of the angels that are in the earth today is that angel that was on the, mm, the white horse. He has been sent into, into the earth to conquer and to, uh, conquering and to conquer. So that angel is in the earth to instigate wars in the earth. That's his mandate. Now when Satan and his angels are removed from the earth, this angel will also be taken out of the earth. And so there will be no um, outside influence brought to bear on the nations of the earth to want to go to war with each other anymore. All of that influence will be removed from the earth. And then we have also the other aspect of our Lord's rule and reign with a rod of iron. And so during the time of our Lord's millennial reign, there will be no conflicts that will break out in the earth. Now there will be uh, disputes between peoples and you know, the guys that are ruling, talking about the saints now, that are ruling over the earth, the various cities. They will go into those cities, they will arbitrate in disputes and they will pronounce judgments and everybody will have to abide by that. But there will be no conflicts between people groups, there will be no wars taking place between nations during that time. So from that point of view, the earth will be at rest and there will be no um, conflicts, as I say, in the earth anymore. One of the other aspects that will take place uh, when our Lord reigns in the earth is that equity will be introduced into the earth. Our Lord will be very strong along this line of introducing equity into the earth. And the passage of scripture that we can open up with on that thought is on Isaiah's um, book, Isaiah 11 verse 4. The scripture says, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. And so, although um, the nations of the earth will have their own governments in place during our Lord's millennial reign, we've already discussed that, they will be constrained in the way that they govern to the overall laws laid down by God in the earth, by our Lord Jesus Christ and His saints. Now one of the things that will uh, be done away with very quickly when our Lord returns to the earth is the inequity that exists between the rich and the poor. Um, the Lord will do away with the very wealthy. When I say do away with them, their wealth will be taken from them. Uh, you, you need to understand we're going to get into it again in the next teaching, we won't touch on it today's teaching, um, that the, the, the society that will exist in the earth during our Lord's millennial reign will be agricultural in nature. That it will be a society that is almost exactly the same as what was on the earth when our Lord Jesus Christ was here the first time. And so mankind will be sustained in the earth through farming. So what will happen is that the, the, the earth's resources, the land, will be given out to all of the inhabitants of the land equally. And so everyone will receive more than sufficient land for themselves to sustain themselves through agriculture, through farming. And so there will no longer be the super wealthy and the very poor in the earth. Equity will be introduced into the earth. Everybody will have the same amount. And there won't be a case of, well, one neighbor will buy up another neighbor's farm and that neighbor will now be homeless. Not at all. That will not be allowed during our Lord's millennial reign. And so equity will be introduced into the earth. It'll be a hard thing for the, the wealthy and the powerful in the earth today to accept because don't forget there will be those who will continue over into our Lord's millennial reign. They will still be alive on the earth. And so they will remember the extreme wealth that they used to have and they will long for that but they won't have access to it because they will not be tolerated in our Lord's reign. Everybody will have enough for them to be able to live comfortable lives for that full thousand year period that they're on the earth. Now don't forget we said they live for over that thousand years. There will be no deaths, no births taking place. God extends the lifespan of those in unbelievers in the earth during that time. But there will be more than enough allocated to everyone. And so everybody will be able to live comfortably. And so you will not have the super rich and the very poor anymore. That will be done away with during our Lord's millennial reign. Isaiah 2.17 says, The loftiness of man shall be bowed down and the haughtiness of men shall be brought low. 
The Lord alone will be exalted in that day. And so it is only the Lord Jesus Christ that will be exalted in that day. There will be no man that will be looked at and you know, admired. Oh, well, yeah, this guy is really great. I wish I could be like him. Not at all. That will not be tolerated in the earth at all. Um, only the Lord Jesus Christ will be exalted in that day. The saints will not tolerate any other man trying to set himself up as being somebody great in the earth. They will very quickly be humbled and brought down. That's the kind, that's the rod of iron being brought to bear, and once again. But the equity will be in the earth. No one will be super rich, no one will be extremely poor. Everybody will have all they, they need in order to live comfortable lives during our Lord's millennial reign. And we're going to end the teaching on that. Amen.